Hello everybody, Mark McCray here again, and today I wanted to do another video uh, focusing on hair creation. I know it's a, a big thing for a lot of new artists trying to sort out how in the world do I do hair for my characters. Uh, it's something that I still study daily, constantly trying to improve, find you know new tools to make things easier, simpler, faster. Uh, I really do not like the X-Gen method. I feel it's far too tedious. Um, the ZBrush Fiber Mesh methods, I'm still playing with. There's some stuff I very much like about it. And I've got a, a new tool that I would like to showcase in another video at some point. Uh, but in this one, I wanted to show pretty much how I, I get to hair now for my hair cards. Uh, for the hair card textures, I should say. Um, and that is in good old Photoshop. So I start with a blank, you know, 248 by 248 canvas. And, you know, I'll, I'll add a layer to that. And I stick to pretty much two brushes, which is this scatter brush that I use. Um, I think it's called a spray brush, actually. And it basically lets me draw out these strands. And I'll just take some time to just draw hair. So I just will continually, you know, get my st strands, try and, you know, I'll, I'll start with my biggest clump. And get a good, strong base of hair strands. And from there, I will switch to a smaller, you know, single strand and start accentuating, um, knock the uh, flow down on that a bit. And I'll just try and define some areas a little bit cleaner, get some Maybe bigger strands off. And I just keep going, you know, until I get something that feels like what I want. And because I've got the flow the way it is, it naturally gives this kind of mix of highlight and low light within the hair. And then with my you know, single is how I'll get, you know, quick, easy flyaway options. You can do, you know, all kinds of stuff if you want to have a ton of control you can always just do with just the single strand brush and you can build it out obviously it takes a lot more time than using the um, spray brush but if you want looser clumps definitely stick with just a nice thin and work in white and then from here so once you've got you know your clumps that you that you like I will then go in and I'll add a slight blur to it. So there's the basic, and I, I usually go just a touch, a little over one, add just a little bit of blur, and I'll add a little bit of noise to it. So you can see I'm, I'm sitting right around 18 because that's generally about where I like to be at. 
Uh, and you can play with your strengths and see. So if we take it all the way off. And I usually like it right around you know, 1820, just to get a little extra noise in there. And then, and then you start adding color. So I'm just going to close that. And this is one that I've already set up for a project that I'm working on. Um, so I've got my colors already set, all my, all my clumps set up. And just to show off, so basically what I'll do is I'll go into my adjustments, um, hue saturation. And this is a lot of how I adjust my colors. is within these level adjustment settings. Um, there's obviously a, a ton of different stuff you can do with your, your levels, color balance, hue, to get just the right color that you want. Um, I typically will keep hair strands and use them across multiple projects and just you know slightly adjust colors adjust lengths, things like that, so that I'm not redrawing new hair strands for every single project. Um, I have different hairstyles that I keep once I've made them. And obviously, you know, reusing assets in the game industry is such a huge thing. You need to have, continue building up a library for yourself of things that you want to use. So once we have this, now the problem lies in that I don't, I don't have a normal map, a displacement map, a AO, any of that stuff. Like this is a decent color mask, obviously. And that's what we're starting as, and that's what we're building to start. Um, I could just use my white mask that I started with, that I created using white, but I discovered a while back, this great little tool by a gentleman named uh, Christian Petrie on GitHub. And I'm gonna show that off in this next part of the video to show you how you can very easily get your texture maps to go along with these hair strands that you've made in Photoshop. So let's switch over to that. Okay, so this is called Normal Map Online. And what this does is it allows you to pull in an image and it will create your normal displacement, ambient, and specular maps for you. And you can display it on a model. You can load your own OBJ file you can turn off the rotation. You can change, you know, the basic that they have here. So because we're doing hair cards, we'll just set it to a plane. And we'll grab this. We'll grab my file there. And you can see immediately I've got this normal map displays it out here. And I can adjust, you know, my strength, my levels. You know, I can really play with this to get exactly what I want. You can invert the red, the green, the height. A ton of stuff you can play with to get exactly the normal map that you're looking for. So we'll just, you know, and then once you've got what you want, you hit download and it brings it to you. Um, and then you can hit the same thing you got your displacement, your AO, your specular, and it is absolutely fantastic so i definitely recommend this tool um, you can adjust your contrasts here so tons of stuff you can play with it is an amazing amazing tool um, definitely suggest taking a look at it if you're for any images that you might need uh, say you're making your own brick textures or wood or anything else from real images and you need to get a normal map, displacement map, and stuff like that for those uh, texture maps that you want to make. Use this tool, not just for hair. Obviously, this is what I use it for, uh, but it can be used for so many great things to create normal maps and ambient occlusion and specular for your, for your images. So I'll, I'll put this link in there in the uh, description so you can get 
take a look at this. Uh, it's completely free. He works off donations. So if it is something that you find you're going to use, you know, throw him a couple bucks. Help the guy out. It's it's amazing that when people put tools like this out for people for free. Um, so I, I hope this helps. Um, if there's anything at all that you want to see from me, any 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 questions, anything that you'd, you'd like to get a closer look at, stuff within Maya, ZBrush, uh, Unreal, a little bit substance painter. I'm not I'm not a complete pro substance painter, but I I'm, I'm decent. Uh, but uh, you know anything you want to see in this channel, anything you'd like help with, um, let me know. You know I'm I'm far from you know the the absolute best professional, but I've I've got a pretty good grasp on on a lot of things, and you know I want to help people out. I want to you know this community is is so amazing. And we only make it better by helping each other. So, you know, if you have anything that you can help me with, definitely, you know, offer your suggestions, offer offer improvements. I, I'd love to hear them. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks so much to everybody that has subscribed recently. And uh, keep an eye on the channel for more content. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody.